Hi everyone, Taya here from Quilting Delights and I am very excited to show you how to make pillow shams. I just got done making a quilt for my sister-in-law and when I was talking to her, I said, by the way, would you like me to make you some pillow shams? And she said yes. And when I hung up, I went, oh my gosh, that means I gotta figure out how to make them. So I uh, watched several different um, types of, or I looked at several different types of pillow shams and picked the parts that I like the best and I'm going to share those with you today. I like pillow shams that have a zipper in the back. Envelope closures tend to blow out a little bit and so I like them to have a zipper and I'm going to show you a super fast easy way to put a zipper into the back of the pillow sham and uh, make sure that it closes up just beautifully. So I like to make them in sets of two. This is for a standard pillow that is 20 inches by 26 inches in the pattern, which is a free download on our website at quiltingdelights.com, free downloads, the pattern will tell you how to adjust for different size pillows. But for today, we're going to do one for a standard 20 by 26 inch pillow. So the first thing you're going to do, we make them in sets of two. We're going to do a yard and a half of the fabric for the front. And I tend to like the backs of my pillow shams very plain. I want the the fun fabric on the front and I want um, something plain on the back because that's where our emphasis is going to be is on the front. You're going to take a yard and a half of fabric for the front and you're going to have it quilted. Now I had this one quilted. I put muslin because this is going to be on the inside of the pillow. I put muslin on the back. I threw it on my long arm and uh, quilted a yard and a half of this fabric. But if you picked a fun fabric like this one that has lines on it, you can just sew down the, the center of the lines. I used a thread that was a little bit darker than the fabric so you could see it. But when you're done with that, you're going to trim these up to 25 inches by 31 inches and set that aside. We're going to have two of those for two pillow shims. Now, the back of the pillow, you're going to take your fabric and you're going to cut it at 25 inches. So it's going to be 25 inches by the whole length of the fabric. You're going to cut it in half on the fold. So we're just going to cut it in half on the fold. And then you're going to take it over to your ironing board and you're going to press it in one inch, fold it over and press it again. So you can see we've got two creases and this is going to make it a really nice finished edge on the inside of your pillow when you're done. So you're going to do that on both pieces, all right? So we've got two creases going all the way down. Now, take your ruler, take your ruler, this is just a little plastic one, and you're going to mark, you're going to put a mark at three inches. I use the blue um, Chaco Ace Fine Marker. I love these because I know that the marks are going to come out. You're going to put a mark at three inches and put another mark at three inches, and then you're going to do the same thing at the other end. The reason we do this is because I'm going to show you how to encase the zipper and not have to worry about uh, basting and all of that stuff. So we're just going to, we're going to sew these two ends together next. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite notions in the world is wash away wonder tape for putting the zipper down. But right now we're just going to pin these and I'm going to pin them at the inside crease. So I'm pinning them just like this, and that line that I drew is where I'm going to stop. So I'm just pinning, and I'm going to sew right down that crease. And I'm going to do that on both ends after I thread my machine. <laughs> So I do like to back tack here, so I'm going to go forward and backwards, and then I'm going to take my needle out. Now if you have a Bernina, I just want to share that one of the stitches that I like the best, because, and I don't know why this is, but I just like it the best, is stitch number 1326. It has um, a different tension setting that my machine seems to like. And um, so I use 1326, that's a really great straight stitch. 
Now I'm going to sew right to here. I'm going to sew right to here in the crease. And then I'm going to back tack. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you want to get as close as you can. And then of course we're going to cut our threads. Keep everything tidy. And trim your threads on the end. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. This is so cool and I don't, um, I don't remember where I saw this. I don't know that I even did see it. I think I might have just made it up because it made sense. I was trying to figure out how to get a nice finished look on the inside edge. Okay, so we're going to sew on the crease, back tack at the beginning. And again, I'm watching for where my dot is that I placed at three inches. And we're done with that. You're going to love this. This is just the coolest thing since sliced bread. All right, I'm going to trim my threads, fold these over. Now we're going to finish the edge so that it is finished on the inside and the outside. and I'm just edge stitching. Good, so now we've got the edges stitched down with a nice finish on the outside and the inside. You might wanna hit this with an iron and just um, flatten it out. And now we're gonna put our zipper in. I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do. First thing we're gonna do is take a zipper and my favorite my favorite tool notion in the world for doing this is wonder tape this is sticky on both sides it's only a quarter of an inch and what happens is you use it to attach to the fabric and then the first time you wash it it washes out and it doesn't gum up your um, sewing machine so i love it it's a little hard to get started but here we go if you take a pin and just slide it under that piece of tape it's perfect this is a 22 inch zipper. These are available at your local quilt stores and sewing centers. They are 22 inches with, um, I think this is a size five zipper teeth. I don't, I don't use an invisible zipper. You could, I suppose, but I like this, um, I like this 22 inch zipper. I'm just gonna cut the end off. And then we're gonna place it along the outside edge and we will cut off the bottom of the zipper, so don't worry about it, but you want it as close to the outside edge as possible. This is hard to do this direction, but I'll do my best. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna just use my fingernail to push that into the zipper tape. We're gonna do this on both sides. I have a section here from where it started that wasn't sticking, so I'm going to put a different piece down.
Okay, so our wonder tape is on, and I'm just going to peel the paper off. Let me set this up to with the back. So we're going to be uh, we're going to have the outside of the pillow on top of our work surface. And I'm going to peel the tape off. And again, this is where having a pin is helpful to get the edge started so that you can get that on there. Set my pin right there. And then this is really sticky, so you want to be careful that you don't get it stuck on anything you don't want. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to slide this inside, but it's easier actually to do it on the back. So let me flip this over because what we want to do Remember, we marked the three inches on both edges. What we want to do is center the zipper teeth in the opening and have the metal part for the bottom and the zipper pull where the metal part for the zipper pull stops. We want those outside the three inches. So this is good. So on this end, my three inches is here, so that's good. And on this end, my three inches is over here. So I'm going to just kind of tack that down a little bit, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I want to kind of look and see that my teeth are centered, and they are. So now I'm going to just put a couple of pins. And you want to put the pins the direction that you're sewing. That's a helpful hint, isn't it? <laughs> because we're going to pull those out before we get to them. And the other thing that is very, very important, and we will put a little reminder at the bottom of the video here, the other thing that is very, very important is that you remember to open the zipper before you sew across the end. You've got to open the zipper, and I'll show you how we do that. That's super easy. All right, so now I've got that side set. Let me set the other side. I'm just putting a couple of pins in to hold on to it. Uh, the zipper tape is wonderful, the wonder tape, because it keeps it um, in position, but I like to just have a pin or two in there to keep my fabric flat. One more pin. We're going to start with that zipper open. And you can use a zipper foot if you have one handy. I don't, so I'm just going to position my needle on my number one foot and go right along, right along that edge. This is a 34D clear foot, which I like a lot. And I'm going to sew down just a little tiny bit, back tack. And you want to back tack to where the stitching stops. So where we, where we stitched this edge together, you want to stop it there. All right, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to sew just a little ways. Then I'm going to leave my needle in the down position. So my needle is in the down position. I'm going to raise my foot, and I'm going to push that zipper pull all the way back up to the top. And now I just sew all the way down to the bottom removing my pins as I go.
at the end here, on both ends, I'll go back and forth several times because we're going to trim that zipper and we want it to not be um, coming undone. So. Again, I'm going to raise my foot and open the zipper so I can get past it. So there's my zipper pull. But I did that, you notice I did that about an inch and a half from the end here. And I'm just going to go up to the end and turn. And then I'm going to go back and forth four or five times because I want that to be really secure. Trim my thread so everything's nice and tidy. And when I close my zipper, it's all done and ready. And this zipper pull will just tuck right up inside that, just like that. So now our zipper's in. That's about the fastest I can get a zipper in two pieces of fabric and it looks fantastic. And there's plenty of room there to put the um, um, pillow inside. Okay, next we're gonna layer and sew these together. You don't have to trim the back side until after we get it onto the pillow sham front. So I'm gonna line that up and center it. And I'm gonna pin around. Now when you sew this together, oh, I forgot, we need to trim this off. So I'm gonna cut my zipper about um, a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more from the line that we drew. And I'll get rid of that extra tape. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and trimmed my backing so that it's the same size as my front. I pinned all the way around, and most important, most important, read the little banner at the bottom. Don't forget to open the zipper before you sew this. If your zipper is closed when you sew this, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting this open. So don't forget to leave an opening for um, the zipper pull part way down. All right. We're going to sew a half inch seam all the way around and you are going to um, cross hatch uh, uh, back tack and cross over on your corners. So make sure you go off the edge and back tack, turn it off the edge back tack. We're going to do that on all four corners. And again, I'm sewing a half inch seam. Okay, so now we have this um, completely sewn together. I'm going to show you a little trick on the corners because we're going to clip the corners and I want to make sure that they never break loose um, right here. So on every corner before we um, turn this, on every corner before we turn this, I'm going to sew a double line. I'm going to sew down and back just right at that corner. So when it turns, it's tight. I'm going to center my needle. And I'm literally sewing back and forth across. And I'll be right back. I'm going to do that on all four corners. And then when you're done, when you're done, go ahead and clip fairly close to that. And that extra double stitched line is going to hold that corner tight. I'll be right back. I finished up my corners and I like corn dog sticks for pushing those corners out. They have a blunt end and they're not as big as a chopstick and they do a really great job. So I pushed the corners out to the outside edge. Now, 
when I pressed this, I rolled the front to the back just a little tiny bit so that it would be nice and nice and even. Next thing we're going to do, and this is the last step before you put the pillow in. I'm so excited to be almost done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark with a ruler, and I use the friction pen. We're going to mark two inches all the way around, and then we're going to sew through both layers. So let me do that, and we'll be right back. We're back and we are ready to finish up this beautiful pillow sham. I'm so excited. I just love the way these come together and they come together quickly. So I'm just gonna review real quick. First of all, you're going to quilt the front piece of fabric of the sham with batting and a piece of muslin. Then we're going to install the zipper on the back two pieces, just like that. Now, when we get ready to do this finishing stitch, remember to open your zipper because we don't want it up here where the foot um, might run over it. So we've installed our zipper. We sewed the two layers together with a half inch seam allowance. We secured our corners with an extra set of stitches, turned it and pressed it out. So now I have marked it. I started marking it with a friction pen, but it wasn't working. So I switched over to my Choco liner pen I don't want to use anything that's water soluble because I'm not going to wash this, but the Choco liner uh, will just wipe off with a damp cloth. So now I'm going to sew all the way around. So what we did, we pressed it and you want to roll the edge when you're pressing it. And then you're going to mark two inches in from that edge, two inches in all the way around. We're just going to sew a square and our sham is going to be done and ready for a pillow. Here we go. going to trim my threads and we are finished. We are finished. Our beautiful pillow sham is done and ready for a pillow. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and this free download off of our website at, inf at uh, quiltingdelights.com and go to the free downloads tab and download your pillow sham pattern. Hope to see your projects on our Facebook page, Quilting Delights, and we will see you soon.